Hey everyone, um, before the video begins, I just want to encourage all my viewers to please donate to the National Bail Fund Network. Um, this is a great cause to keep the um, peaceful protests going here in the United States um, so that hopefully we can see some real meaningful change um, in the coming weeks, if not months, um, here in the U.S. Um, please, 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 if you can donate, um, go to the link in the description um, and donate. Um, and it only takes less than five minutes, and it's for a really great cause. Um, thank you. The Sanders residents, armed with the best guard dog and weapons in North America, this property is home to one of the most mysterious men to walk the earth. Rumors surround him as Southern Illinois' local savage. Now, Ian Garvey leads his team into the unknown. Equipped with the latest technology, they set out on this legendary property. They aren't sure what they'll find, but they know what they're looking for. The truth. What's up all you high schoolers and college kids that still randomly follow this Instagram account for some reason? You're probably wondering what the topic of today's video is, and I can hardly contain my excitement because today's the day we get to dox Charlie! I'm, I'm just being cute. We're not actually going to dox anybody. Uh, we, sh we just shot a, a short documentary on Charlie. Uh, we're, we're not going to go to any Keemstar levels in this video. But who exactly is Charlie Sanders? Charlie is 18 years old, currently living in Jackson County, Illinois. He attends Southern Illinois University, majoring in agro-business economics. Charlie has many talents and interests, but the most notable of them are, he is skilled in using a wide range of weapons, he knows a lot about various movies, actors, and Rotten Tomato scores, and he also loves to hunt. So, what I did is uh, I assembled my team, I got Max Johnson and Drake Martin, both very good at filming videos, editing videos, coming up with creative ideas for videos. On May 26th, we arrived at Charlie's property at approximately 9 a.m., and the second Charlie walked out the door, um, we were in for a wild ride. You said okay. Oh, I got it. Oh... My God. <laughs> that is a good outfit. Holy shit. <laughs> After our initial banter with Charlie, he led us inside, and of course, our first questions were about his legendary sure. outfit. Uh, so can you just walk us through your, your, uh, your outfit here today? Oh yeah, certainly. What I'm wearing right here is a Irish flat cap made in Britain, Garrison brand. Okay. These are 1970 aviators from my grandpa. Oh, sweet. I'm wearing a Rolex on my right wrist. Left wrist is the Apple Watch Series 4. Five, five hasn't come in yet. Okay. This is my grandpa's U of I, class of 53. What, what is the beep? Uh, usually the beep means that someone's here. You expecting anyone? Uh, we do have a member of the crew who's a little running a little behind. Um, On my time? Uh, yeah, I apologize. What Charlie didn't know, however, was that we had planned on Max being late so we could see how Charlie would prepare for some unknown person approaching the house. I don't know who the person is, and he looks dangerous. I usually unleash my guard dog. Do you want to practice that on, on our late crew, crew member? On my time. Yeah. Oh, man. Holy shit, that dog is big. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, I don't I don't think we should head out. We went outside and wanted to see how the dog would react to Max getting out of his car. Or staying in his car. See my dog's doing his work by keeping the intruder in his car. So can you uh, can you talk about your dog? He is a greater Swiss mountain dog. Born in the Swiss Alps, you can guess by the name. We got him in Missouri. He is four years old and weighs 155 pounds. 
Max could have developed a car. I'll treat him for going tonight. He's doing his job. Look how he's sniffing all the cars. He knows that, uh, he knows what doorknobs and handles are, so he'll sniff doorknobs and handles, and if you can smell something, he knows someone's there. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> In my car, it's trying to open the door by biting the handle. <laughs> After Max safely made it inside, we went back to asking Charlie about his outfit. This is my grandpa's class of 1953 ring from U of I. This is his Knights of the Round Table ring back when they formed that, well, actually I shouldn't talk about it. This is a Vineyard Vines polo, one of my many I threw on. It's very, I really love the color, but my favorite one. My Louis Vuitton belts for this occasion. I only throw it on on special occasions. I feel like this is a perfect time. This is my Ralph Lauren pull, uh, cargo shorts, as you can call them. I have three of them. My favorite color right here, very cool. I'm wearing my boat shoes. Before I take out the boat sometimes. Sweet. Oh, I know, pardon me, sorry. On a special occasion like this, I would just bust out the Gucci Guilty Clone. I already put on Bright Guys got here, but it's not very nice. Favorite, one of my favorite scents. After we finished asking Charlie about his outfit, we had him walk us through his daily routine, which was surprisingly filled with many twists um, and was pretty adventurous at the end of the day. According to my Apple Watch Series 4, it is 6 a.m. I get up, when I know the light is coming through at a 39 degree angle, it's time to get up. Uh, let's see, I'm already dressed to perfection already. Right. Might as well slip on the boat shoes. Oh, oh, you know, I always leave a Rolex around. As Charlie continued to pick out his outfit, we couldn't help but admire Charlie's room. The walls are covered in various certificates, postcards, and drawings. They are accompanied by two ominous looking swords and, of course, some Star Wars memorabilia. Stretch. After we were done in Charlie's room, he took us to his downstairs bathroom and showed us how he would clean up for the day. Walk into my bathroom here. I go ahead and spray myself with a morning dose of Gucci Guilty. Take a, take a leak right here. This thing is it's too massive. Can't get it <laughs> Take the belt off, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> I usually rinse my face off with water, but as of now, I'll skip that. I then apply my... Minoxidil foam. You see, I have a genetics have said to me that since my dad is half bald, I should go half bald. And I refuse that grab's hat. Is that why you wear the hat? That's why I wear the hat half the time. But also, I'm, I'm trying my best to keep my hair. So I apply this, and some, but just stuff to put in your head to hopefully make your hair fall a little stronger. Because I don't want to lose my hair. Is this some Scientology stuff? I don't think it's Scientology. Don't, I don't think so. So what time of day would this normally right be? Right now it should be around 6.15 if I'm correct. Six, so that took 15 minutes? That's like about 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, sometimes I piss for a longer time. <laughs> I get on my, I turn my clock on, stopwatch specifically. I stretch for 30 seconds each part of the body. For example, 30 seconds start right now, I do this for 30 seconds. What muscles are those? Is that stretching? Oh, uh, leg muscles. Okay. This is <laughs> Trash. <laughs> oh, yes. A welcome addition. <laughs> Food depends. And well, it depends on what I have. You know what I'm moving for. On occasion, I'm feeling it. I have to clap my hands. Uh, my mom comes out and makes me a big sandwich. Depending on the mood, I drank some organic milk, either coconut, coconut or almond. I always drink a half cup of this every day. Should be around seven o'clock in the morning when this happens. That's when I go get my dog from my cage, but he's out of his cage, I don't know. But I go. Open his cage, I give him his morning pets, because he expects morning pets. What does he do if he doesn't get his morning pets? He's, he, he hurts me. Now it should be around 7.10 when I get back to the house. 
and say, you know, it's time to, it's time to relax for a little bit. I have something more to do. Do I want to play on my desktop or on my laptop? PS4 or Xbox One? Nintendo Switch or Wii? Wii is still fun. Or sometimes I like to go crazy and play my Oculus Rift. <sighs> so many choices. It's hard to choose. We asked Charlie what came next in his day, and much to our dismay, I mean, it was story. taking Obi I mean, for a walk. Put in, but if you think it's, good, it's your story, but we will be manipulated. <laughs> I get the final say on everything. So. If you want good food. All right, we're walking the dog. Okay, I'm about to change clothes for that. After Charlie changed, he came back downstairs and showed off his outside outfit. This outfit features a breathable long sleeve fleece, tough pants, a camo fedora, and sandals. After that, we headed outside to walk the dog. I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> Bite him in the nuts. Oh, you're like a leash for him, man. Oh. <laughs> Break any leash. <laughs> and so, at nine o'clock, how would you go about walking him? Just go, just go through your process. Well, of, like, starting to walk. I've walked him so many times. He, he knows when a walk is going to happen because I walk in that direction. He's smart enough to know that. So he kind of like knows what time of day it is. He knows what time of day it is. Yep, he knows when the walk is. Just like how he knows when the walk is. Okay. Obi, you gonna go to walk? Do it. <laughs> we walked with Obi and Charlie for a little while, and Charlie showed us all of Obi's favorite spots in the field, and Obi's not so favorite spots in the field. After we were done walking with them, Charlie leashed up Obi in front of the house, and we went inside to get Charlie's list of chores for the day. Normally around this time, 9:30 after I walk Obi, like I said, I call him, ask him what work he has for me, and he will tell me what to do. And I'll start with the first thing to do. That's how it goes. Let's call him, shall we? Yes, Terry. Hey, Dwight. It's Charlie Sanders. Hey, Charlie. How are you doing today? Doing right. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thanks. What can I help you with? Uh, you got any outside work for me to do? I do have a little bit of outside work. That'd be nice if you went out and pulled all those weeds between the uh, house and the sidewalk. Would be the first one. All right. But uh, for today, that's fine. If you get a chance to go and feed the catfish and stuff, that'd be great. Feed the catfish. All right. So, anyhow, anything else on your end? Uh, no, no, not really. I'm just, just uh, doing stuff over here, you know, the normal day. The normal day, the normal routine. <laughs> okay, well, have fun, and uh, anyway, I gotta jump here. I got another call coming in here in a second, so I'll, if you need something, just give me a buzz. Yeah, I will do that. Alright, sounds good. We'll see you. Bye bye. Bye. You always talk to your dad like that. I actually do. <laughs> <laughs> I do talk to him like that. <laughs> I do. You see, you see, every time, like, you know, no, a phone, you know, he was raised in the, back in the day, you know, before caller ID. So, he, his, like, in the 90s, when he finally got his, like, his phone, his work phone, he told me that every time he said hello, the person's like, may I speak to Dwight, Dwight Sanders? He says, speaking. And, that, and then it goes on from there. He said, say, you know, every time he answers the phone, he says, hello, this is Dwight. To say that extra second of saying, I speak to Dwight. And you told me that, and I said, Well, thanks to caller ID now, I know someone's calling me. And I can save that extra, I can only have to say this is so and so. And he says, you gotta, you gotta try it though. Why do I have to try it? He says, Do it. So every time I call him now, he says, Hello, this is Dwight. I say, Hello, this is Charlie Sanders. So he knows who he's talking to, even though he has caller fucking ID. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I say, hey, what's up, after I answer, he's like, who am I speaking to? I'm like, this is Charlie Sanders. <laughs> this is a shed. It's where all the equipment is for mowing. Everything. You know, any type of outside work or transportation got most of it in here. Got my my dad's work truck, you know, if I need to take stuff to the trash, the dumpster, I take it. It takes time to work, which is another vehicle. So, uh, tools, fishing poles, I mean, just anything you use to fix something. Lawnmower. This is the golf cart we're going to take. I charged it last night, should be good to go. I'll just have to take those off to get fixed. What's in there? What? Nothing. Uh, the car's all electric, I have to turn it, it's fully charged. You have to go around, you have to open the gate, and it's a straight drive from north to the pond, you'll see some other cars. 
After a brief dispute about whether or not we'd be able to show what was in the shed's side room, we loaded into this bad boy, the club car. The club car is electric, featuring foldable back seats and a shotgun mount on the back left. This car has also been featured in some iconic videos starring Charlie. <laughs> We then took off into the fields, 120 acres of grass and forest, featuring a lake and a small pond. The Sanders also rent out a house they own on their property, providing extra revenue. Charlie first took us to the lake, and we were quick to point out the destroyed dock. Built it, and so we'll ride it away, sun and rain. My dad thought about taking it down, he bought the place, you know, kind of looks character, you know, big character of someone. Been there as long as I can remember. Charlie fed his catfish for a while and then took us over to the small pond where Charlie had a surprise waiting for us. Homemade pole right here. We've got a nice tree branch attached a line to it. I pinched the barb off the hook so I won't hurt the fish. I just want to see, you know, if I catch it, I hopefully will. I'll be able to see it. There's no fucking way this is going to work. 12 seconds later. Alrighty. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, it's not a bad size. I got fresh bar on their needles. That's what you fucking get. <clears throat> That's what I get and catch on. Hmm. You know, is that... Is that bad? Are bluegill prickers highly poisonous? Yes, they are. After a quick trip to the ER, Charlie got back to showing us around the fields. The fields are mostly empty and used to harvest hay. However, the property is home to the highest point in Jackson County, and Charlie was proud to show us. Damn! After Charlie finished his main chores, we drove back to the house, thinking we were going to get lunch, but were instead surprised by something else. So normally around this time, I'd eat lunch, we're going to get lunch a little later so we can get everything fed here. Either jog outside or I go in the basement and work out. It's Dwight. Hello, it's Charlie Sanders. Hey, Charlie, this is Dwight. Uh, I need you to do something for me real quick here. Uh, my computer is showing that we have a breach in Sector 4 with an untucked animal uh, in that area, and I need you to check that out immediately. All right, you got it. All right, thank you. Bye. Thank you, bye. Let's go. We wanted to go with Charlie to see what the breach was, but he said it was too dangerous and that we needed to wait back at the house. Susanna has dropped off our lunch, got sandwiches, let's, uh, let's enjoy. After lunch, we watched Charlie play some video games, and then got to see a legendary workout routine. After Charlie walked us through some of his workout, we asked him what was up with his shoulder. And I had what you call a shoulder impingement. It's nothing horrible. 
nothing life threatening, but it's just, you know, a, you have a bad kind of really weak shoulder. It pops all the time. It's permanent. It's going to be permanent. But yeah, I guess I strengthen the muscles around the shoulder to keep that ball in place. After Charlie's rigorous workout, he explained what the rest of his day boils down to. It's usually around 2 o'clock. Um, now I usually jerk off again after that. I go upstairs, I hang out with the mom, we go outside, and we just talk, hang out with the Opie, and uh, do that until my dad comes home, which would be around 3, so that's salt hour, just outside and just talk. When my dad comes home, he comes, and then we talk. He sits down with us, and we talk for another hour. 4 o'clock, we're like, okay, let's not talk again until dinner time. Dinner time between 5 to 6, actually. We eat dinner, after dinner, I walk Obi. My dad and I both walk Obi to walk off what we ate and also to give Obi some exercise. When we get back, it should be around 6.30, if not 7. I play some basketball from my dad. It's 7, 7.30. Dad's when it's kind of everyone's just doing their own thing now. I might watch more TV with my mom or come downstairs and play games again. Let's say 8, 8.30. That's when I put Obi up. It's time for his bedtime. I go outside, there's Obi. Uh, 8.30. I can usually not watch some TV a little bit, you know, with my mom. Then I take a shower, anytime between 9 and 10, just depends on how long I talk to my mom or what we're watching. Once that's, once I'm in the shower and I'm all clean, that's, that's it for the day. I have a rule once I'm clean, I'm not doing anything else because I have to take a shower. After Charlie was done showing us his daily routine, it was time for the interview. So I sat down with Charlie and we got down to the nitty gritty. Some of the information in the interview cannot be shared um, in the documentary, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, the Sanders would have sued me. On DJC Stock, we recently did a short film um, busting a group called The Coffee Club. And The Coffee Club happens to operate out of this space here. Uh, we we want to know how The Coffee Club came to be and why you are the ringleader of The Coffee mm. Club. Coffee Club is one of my proudest achievements I've ever done. I had a lot of the boys over. The boys is a gang of mine. The boys. They had, we had, had them over one time. We were hanging out. This is when we recently, I got a new espresso machine upstairs. And I went up to one of my friends and I said, hey, you want an espresso? He's like, sure, I'll have one. We went upstairs. Three more guys followed behind us because they overheard me. He's like, hey, I want an espresso. We came upstairs. I made an espresso for that one guy. The other guy was like, hey, you have cured. Can you make me a cup of coffee? He's like, yeah, sure, make a cup of coffee. Same with the other guy. And we started joking around. It's like, oh, we have coffee club. It's like coffee club, us guys just drinking coffee. And then kind of stopped for a moment because we knew that was, that's going to be a thing. Your love life and what's next for Mr. Sanders? Uh, I currently don't have a love life. This quarantine, lockdown, you really made me do some self-reflecting, and I realized that uh, I'm not, I want to, I'm not uh, looking for anything new right now. I'm really enjoying having my, having me by myself. Having you know, freedom? Having freedom. Okay. So you're not looking for anything in the future? Not anything in the future. Near, not in your future. But okay. Yeah, I would, eventually, yeah. Um, can you talk about your music tastes, specifically hard metal and concerts? I grew up listening to Slipknot and Corn and all those bands. My my family, my mom and my dad weren't a huge fan of. Uh, well, they 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 liked all music. That's just what they primarily listened to, you know. But there was no Beatles or Elton John in the car when I was younger. In the backseat there was there was the hard stuff because it's either like, I just grew up with it. I didn't know. I wasn't really educated on music or whatever I listened to. I liked, and I was just exposed to hard rock and heavy metal. Are there any embarrassing Dwight stories that you can tell the camera? Embarrassing? My dad's pretty white. Uh, there's nothing that he would do out of the blue. I guess there was a there was a time before it got really hot and the woods were covered in ticks and poison ivy, where you could still walk in the woods. It was cold outside. We were walking. And we have a creek, kind of below a hill. My dad saw a vine, and he said, he looked over and he says, "Hey, Charles." I'm like, "Yo, what's up?" To check this out, he got and he swung the vine, and he made it across the creek unarmed. That was the most dangerous thing he's probably ever done. Can you talk about why you like knives so much? I love knives.
talk about your favorite hunting trip. Hunting, it's been lots of on a hunting trip. I enjoyed when my dad and I went prairie dog hunting in Oklahoma. That was a long time. That was probably sixth grade. Uh, it was just a, it was a good trip. It was a successful hunt. It was, I haven't done it before. It was for the first time. It was, it was a good experience. Exploding varmints. We, uh, as a documentary crew, were looking for the truth and um, posted on local newspapers such as the Southern and the Egyptian. Um, there have been many reports that in Jackson County, specifically around uh, the, this residence, uh, there have been sightings of something that seems to be Sasquatch. Um, can you talk to us about this? There has been times where I have, uh, I have seen from a distance a rather tall and hairy looking figure. I can't say that I've tried to capture it. And Are you successful? I have not been successful. I have tried a couple of times. Traps I've set have always been failed. I always end up damaged or just gone. Would you mind if we tagged along to view the capture potentially? The capture? I'm only in the... I plan on doing this pretty soon. Do you have the time for that? Yeah, we have the time. No, oh, this is not a deer. This is not a regular deer hunt. This is an unknown hunt. And now anything can happen. Death, sex, anything could happen. <laughs> We're ready. I've pinpointed the exact location of this beast that we're trying to look for using Google Maps. If I'm correct, it's due west of here, about 20 clicks. What's your plan to catch it? Plan to catch it? Well, just like I've caught that untagged animal earlier today, I brought my blowgun. With each needle has a kind of a serum to it, knocks it out, like I did with the other, the uh, untagged animal. But if all else fails, it's got the Mega Magnus gun here. One bullet in it is all I need. All right, it's time to go. Engage night vision. All right, let's go. We then took off for the forest entrance, about 20 clicks away. And when we got there, we were quickly confronted with an ominous looking print. It's definitely a trail. See in there? It's in there. Let's go in. that Charles what is that Charles what is that after a little bit more running, we ended back up where we started, and Charlie ultimately blamed us for scaring off the creature. After that, we parted ways with Charlie, and that was that. And that's the end of this documentary. Thank you so much for watching, um, and take care, everybody. Charlie, it's Gilbert Gottfried here. I'm my buddy Ian. Just showed me this documentary on you. After watching it, I have to say, you look like a giant bitch. Go get a real job, you wispy, bearded, balding piece of shit. Share this video with a... Pound Sorry Charlie.